Number five, licensed music. When watching the AEW product, you might notice that the wrestler's entrance themes are often recognisable tunes you may have heard elsewhere. This is because AEW owner Tony Khan has tried to make his wrestlers stand out with licensed entrance theme music from the likes of Jungle Boy's Tarzan Boy, Hook's Chairman's Intent and John Moxley's Wild Thing. This is something ECW often used to do such as the Sandman's iconic entrance to Enter Sandman by Metallica. At times ECW would also allow the themes to continue to play as the action unfolded as well which AEW seemed to have adopted when showcasing its Anarchy in the Arena type matchups. The recognisable licensed entrance songs help create a memorable party atmosphere that you wouldn't necessarily expect at a wrestling show, but it allows the audience to sing along and have the wrestlers connect with the lyrics of the song to help portray them as an even bigger star. In a sit down interview, Tony Khan commented on why he uses so much licensed music within AEW confirming that he paid for all of the licensed music in perpetuity, meaning that he can showcase them forever. This is something he believes will be an exciting addition to AEW's eventual streaming library. Number 4. Daily's Place Reliance As AEW has started to grow even more over the years, the product has moved around to numerous locations, including England and Canada. However, AEW often found a home in Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. This was especially true during the pandemic era, as AEW produced all of its shows from Daly's Place on a weekly basis. But even before then, the company had begun to establish the arena as its home. This rings resemblance to the days of the infamous ECW Bingo Hall in Philadelphia, where ECW's rabid fanbase would help grow the promotion into an undeniable entity within the business. Today this helps create a dedicated fan base for AEW and helps form a special connection that very few wrestling promotions have managed to do with special venues. Number 3. Bringing up Hungry Young Talent ECW was often seen as the land of opportunity, a place where wrestlers could go to make themselves known or reinvent themselves. It was a common sight for unsigned or unknown indie talent to appear within ECW some of which went on to become members of the roster or move on to other promotions. This always gave fans an exciting edge on who could show up next or someone they could help get behind. AEW has also made this a big part of their product, especially during the pandemic era where AEW would help many independent wrestlers get paid in a time where there was no work available. Shows like AEW Dark are especially designed to feature such talent and allow the wrestlers a platform to showcase themselves as well as develop their skills along the way. Even the likes of Darby Allen, MJF and Wheeler Yuta have all been able to benefit from the formation of AEW and so have the fans. Number 2. A Mixed Roster Something that helped ECW stand out was the mixed depth in its roster. From luchadors like Rey Mysterio, to technical masters like Chris Benoit, to extreme violence with the likes of Terry Funk. Fans could always be sure to see a true mix of refreshing styles and characters under the extreme brand. Whilst other promotions like WWE and WCW did of course showcase this, it was never on the level of ECW. This is something Tony Khan has also adopted for AEW. Not only with international stars from the likes of Japan, which ECW would often do, but AEW has the likes of high-flying luchadors in Ray Phoenix, to brawling beasts like Brody King, bloody battles from John Moxley, or technical wizardry from the likes of Daniel Bryan. The AEW roster is super deep with a variety of talent and guarantees fans a fresh and dynamic show each and every week. Number 1. Violence It's no secret that Tony Khan is a big ECW fan, and perhaps no comparison is more clear than the violence showcased within the AEW product. Whilst the WWE tried to move away from this type of bloody violence throughout its move to a PG product, AEW saw this as a perfect opportunity to showcase plenty of bloody battles to help stand out as an alternative to the WWE. In AEW's early days, the product didn't rely on blood and violence too much, but over time this has become a much more common sight, with AEW bringing the likes of exploding barbed wire death matches, blood and gut type matches, and even deathmatch legend Nick Gage all to the mainstream. Nowadays, AEW seems to often rely on hardcore matches to draw attention to certain shows or events it wants more of a spotlight on, 
such as Sting's last match or a number of women's matches on Rampage. Either way, AEW has certainly tapped into one of ECW's core aspects to help stand out within today's modern landscape. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more wrestling content. Thank you.